in the Argentinian game. He's telling me, right, you're going on and this, 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 this is what I want you to do. And as he does it, Bex falls Bex on the floor, yeah. kicks out at Simone. Oh. And as he kicks out at Simone, I look at Glenn, and Glenn looks at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to put someone on that can play midfield. What has happened to the English centre forward? Ronaldo and Messi. Every young player wanted to be that. Everyone's talking about financial fair play now. We had that eight and a half years ago. You got whacked, didn't you? I got whacked, 40 million pound. Why did you leave? With the fans, it became toxic. I was thinking, why, why do I need to take this? Do you remember scoring a goal at the back post against me where you put me in the back of the net? Yes, right. that was Why did you do that every day of the week? Yeah, <laughs> <honestly. laughs> I used to do, you used to love that one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Stick to Football, brought to you by Skybet. Yeah. <laughs> one, take, one take Gary. That's what they call me, one take Gary. Ah, there we go. Oh, hey. Roy, back on Instagram. Did I? Oh, yeah, I sent a Instagram. picture last week. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Instagram. Did I do a picture? Well, what did I do last week? What did Roy put on Instagram no. last week? My memory. It's your memory. My memory. Oh, my God. A picture with you? And you headed the ball more than me. You start to think you're just like, Rob, get out of I can't remember the Instagram. A nice crazy, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Ollie, yeah. Sorry, was it Ollie, yeah. I felt bad as if I'd slagging Ollie off when he was here. Okay. Remember, Ollie was on him. The Leverkusen. Everyone loves Ollie, don't they? Oh, here he is. He's let himself go, you know, because his wife's away. He hasn't even had a, sh he hasn't even had a shave. Thank you. You didn't realise how she didn't say yes. I did have a shave this morning. <laughs> You like this? I like it, yeah. Like right, he's got competition, hasn't he? Look, I tell you what, I tell you what. Hey, hey. Look at this phone. Richest guy Rob, in the Rob, world. He's never missed his <laughs> <laughs> Can we start with Rob, this? Is that your phone? Can we start this with this? This is my phone. <laughs> Why is Roy, the problem? Richest guy in the world. Can we just have a look at Roy's phone? Can we get him a new phone? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's his grandkids play with it. It's terrible. It's like. Why don't you get a decent phone? It's still got the button. Be careful the way you're using your finger, don't you? Smell this. That's nice, isn't it? Nice, yeah. What is it? Tom Ford, this one. Oh, it's nice, that. It is. Bloody hell, mate! <laughs> that was a good pour, eh? That was a really good pour, eh? I really like Les, what I've Les, I've got a note here that you have a helicopter licence. Yeah, man, I used to always Wow! Yeah. Do you fly a helicopter? Yes. Wow. Do you come today by helicopter? No. Nah, that is incredible. But... You still, you still well, use I, it? I, I, um, I passed my test while I was at Spurs. Wow, that's... How do you do that? That's is like... that to get out of Spurs quick? <laughs> <laughs> When I, was, when I was at Newcastle, yeah. Giza, I was uh, Keegan to put something out, saying like, um, you know, what he said to me was like, you're coming into a goldfish bowl in terms of like London, you can, you can get lost and stuff. You can't do nothing up here. So I said, three things you want to do. I said, I want to learn how to play saxophone, learn how to cook, and I want to learn how to ride a motorbike. He said to me, I can let you do two of them, but the third one I, ain't, I, I can't let you do. So riding a motorbike, so I can't let you do. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, oh, fuck, you know, so well, you asked me what I wanted to do, that's what I want to do. So he goes, all right, uh, there was a uh, place in uh, Newcastle that built him a Harley, and he said, I'll let you pass your test if you ride the Harley back to my house. So I said, all right, no problem. Kevin Keegan had a Harley? Yeah. Mm. So, but they, someone in Newcastle just oh. built it for him, he, yeah. he couldn't ride it, <laughs> but he was just going to showcase it at his house. So he said, as long as you yeah. agree to ride it to my house, yeah. I said, yeah, no problem. And then some, some he put this in the, in the programme saying, like, you know, just, things for me to do and, and then some guy come on and said look do you want to learn how to fly a helicopter and at first I was like nah not really and he goes come and have a look so I went down and had a look I just got just got into my head oh. do you know what I mean? I'd be Imagine so scared. Oh. I'd be yeah. so scared. Is Would it you? scary? Nah not it's, it, it's one of those things once you go up you go you either love it or you hate it you'll yeah. go get me down straight away or you'll go boom and to be fair when I first went up was like fuck no I'm not sure I like this. And then the geezer said, where do you live? And I said, I just live over there. So he goes, let's go and have a look at your house. As soon as I saw my house, that was it. Just changed my perception How come? of everything. You wouldn't see my but house no, it was just, it was just, It was just, it just changed my perception of everything. We did it in the jungle, did you? And no, I was no, like, no. get me out of here. Yeah, it was just open on the yeah, side. Right, I don't so. know if it was meant to be, but this one was. Yeah, because you were and in the jungle, And I was like, yeah. oh. It's scary. Oh, so scary. Did, how did you get into the jungle? We drove in, but like, I think we had to go on one to go up to, when we had to do the, the walking on that big yeah, tower. So yeah. we had to go round and then they landed somewhere. But I'm not really fussed with them, to be honest. It doesn't oh, bother me. With so it. I'm not scared. Have you been in one? I've been in a helicopter, I'm not. Have you? No, ever. Oh, no, I mean, it's not. not, not it's, it's making not. me feel. We jumped out of a plane, didn't we, yeah. last year? 
You wouldn't do that again, no, would you? No, no. I was, I was ill for a couple of Yeah, I was ill for a bit yeah. of that. And then what was, that it, like, what was it like when you was coming down? What was it, what was it, was it fast? Good. Was it like yeah, freezing? Was, no, I didn't, Violent, I, I didn't mind the free fall, but it was when you went into the, you know, in the parachute. Oh, yeah. 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 And then you start to swing and yeah. you just get like motion sickness. I was getting, yeah. I felt ill. Is that why you were ill after? I was ill for a few hours after that night, yeah. Mm. You were ill as well. It was, oh, God, wasn't great. Right. Jeez. He plays saxophone. I, 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 I started to learn oh. while I was up there, but I came back to London and then too many distractions in London. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what year did you go to Newcastle then? Uh, 95, 96, 95. 95. That season. Yeah. That season. Right. <laughs> right, here we go. go right. That's, right. That season. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Stick to Football, brought to you by Skybet. And our guest this week joining me, Wrighty, Roy and Jill, is a Newcastle, Tottenham and QPR legend, Les Ferdinand. He's going to talk to us about his career, the famous Manchester United Newcastle running and his time at QPR as sporting director. We're going to start with centre-forwards. OK. And we've got two English centre-forwards in it. Um, Why? <laughs> <Where are you? laughs> hey, by the way, do you remember? Play, do you remember this? Do you remember us playing centre half against Newcastle? Me and you were centre backs, and a Christmas, and it was like yeah. ice on the pitch. Yeah. Do you remember the setup for corners that day? Defending. Yeah. No, but hopefully you're going to tell me. I'd, so I was. We, we had two on you. Right, me and him. <laughs> it's, fact, it's a fact. This. I was there to block you as the ball got kicked and Roy was literally stood there behind me to go and win the ball because you basically used to score from headers all the time. Do you remember that? No. I remember scoring. In the game? I scored, yeah. From centre-half? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Yes, from centre-half. They should have put two on him. Yeah. Was it a <laughs> <laughs> no, it was from a set-piece. Remember, they defended oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Phil played, didn't I? He stayed yeah. up from a corner, oh, okay. I remember. Yeah, no, I do remember, I think. 2-0, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you remember the game? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. We, we were calling it the other one. <laughs> it be a low point in your career. <laughs> 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 you said the just yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the delivery weren't great, was it? <laughs> yeah. And you got no, you didn't get any coming. One corner, you think yeah. you got? Was yeah. it? Maybe two or three. English centre forwards. So in the nineties, I always say this. I, I was obviously in the squad, and Michael Owen. Alan Shearer, Peter Beardsley, Teddy Sheringham, Ian Wright, Robbie Fowler, Les Ferdinand, Andy Cole, Stan Collymore, Chris Sutton and Dion Dublin were the centre forwards wow. that could have been selected in the squad in the mid-90s. Well, not the last four or five you've made. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, come on. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> what has happened to the English centre forward, Les? Uh, Ronaldo and Messi. I think in terms of... We went for a period where wingers were scoring goals, were scoring 30 goals a season. Yeah. And everyone wanted to be Ronaldo, everyone wanted to be, be Messi. And, um, what, the managers? No, I think the players no longer wanted to be a traditional centre forward, they didn't want to be a number nine, they wanted to be that person. Henri comes onto the scene, they want to be that person that comes off the wing and score goals. And they were scoring an abundance of goals. So every young player wanted to be that, that player. Hence was the, you know, the, the, the demise of the, the number nine. Wow. Who you, so who did you want to be when you grew up? I suppose the, the, the person I kind of looked at and... Denzel Washington. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was one of them. <laughs> go on, no, 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 go on, sorry. I don't know how good at football Denzel was. <laughs> I didn't want to be like Denzel, you know, to be fair. But growing up, I suppose, you know, I used to look at... Van Basten, I used to look at Vieri and, you know, I mean, younger than that was obviously Palais when I was, when I was growing up as a kid. I looked at Palais and that was about it. You know, I wasn't allowed to go to football, so I used to watch it. I used to watch what I could on the TV. There wasn't a lot about then, so... Um, you weren't allowed to go because of... You... My parents didn't think it was an environment that was safe for me to go to. Right. Mm. So when I was growing up, yeah. I couldn't actually go What to... area was you in? I was, uh, I, I, well, I grew up around a corner from uh, QPR. Mm. I was in Lab Grove, so uh, it was a stone throw away. Um, and my parents just didn't think it was an environment mm. for me. 70s, bro. Yeah. That would have been intense, yeah. yeah. Mm. Did bad. I was going to Millwall at the time. So <laughs> <laughs> I was going to Millwall at the time. How was that? Used to, yeah, because my aunt used to live in Deptford, so every other week you'd have to go and stay there. So some of the times yeah. Millwall would be playing. So you'd end up going there. But you, it was it was intense. Though. Did you go and watch? Did you go yeah, I used to watch a lot of Millwall yeah. games when I was that age, like 12 and 13. I used to watch a lot of them. Yeah. 
Did you feel safe when you were there? Well, this is the thing. This is the, the thing. When you, when you went and watched Mill, you could, you know, you, you, you're jumping over the top, you know what I mean? And then, because it was a lot of people there, there, you know when you got that metal bar? Yeah. So you could, you could stand on that bar because so you could get to see it if it was packed. And then you can hold on to the, someone's neck so, that, so you could stand on it and <laughs> so you wouldn't yeah. fall off. Yeah. So it was, it was really quite friendly. But like it was, it was, it was good. I used to love it. Yeah. Just on those centre forwards, I named before. Mm. You, you, uh, we've talked about your frustrations with England, haven't mm. we? Did you feel frustrated with England? Because obviously at the time, the main, the main partnership that was seen was like Shearer and Sheringham. Mm. Did you feel that you weren't respected with England, or didn't get the sort of the, the love that you probably could have got? I know you feel the same about that, don't you? With... Yeah, for sure. Every time I played for England, it, it always felt like. If I didn't play out my skin and have, you know, that was at the top of my game, yeah. um, that was always going to be my last chance. It was always my last chance. I was never given, I never felt I was given a run in the England side. Even when I was, you know, going for a period of where I was scoring goals in the Premier League and felt on top of my game, yeah. I never felt I was given an opportunity to, to play. It was always going to be my last game. I, I think, think the, pressure, you... the pressure, sorry, Jill, the pressure from that as well, though, Les, is that when you name all those people and that, you know that if you don't do it, then someone's waiting to get their opportunity. Mm. But is that good pressure? Um, it's good pressure, but then yeah, while you're yeah, playing, no. trying to get it done, you know what I mean? It's something that you... you, you yes, you, you want to be able to, you know... Like, you know, Teddy comes in. Teddy's not someone who's scored yeah. loads of goals, but Teddy brings something else. Mm. But when you look at what you're trying to get in, in front of Shearer, and that, that, that person was mine and Les's role, and Fowler's and Cole's and Collymore. Teddy had a different role, so if you came in, and you weren't hitting it and scoring straight off the bat. And I know I missed a few, especially in the Norway game and the Russia game, got marked out of the game in Russia, mm. Norway, when those were my opportunities, two opportunities I missed. And I knew I'm not going to get that chance again. Yeah. It's not going to come again. Do you think you scored a lot of goals because of that mindset? I was watching some videos of you and there's so many goals where it's like 70-30 in favour of the keeper or you think the defender's going to get it and you just come from nowhere and it's almost as if you just want the ball more than them. Did, did you feel like that? I think it was a little bit like right. I just said there and the names that you read out there, those, those, those guys sparked me, they inspired me because like they were scoring at the weekend and then you felt, I've got to score, mm. I've got to score. So that's 70-30 you had to make into, in, into your favour yeah. because if you weren't scoring, you weren't going to be, you weren't going to be in, mentioned in those, um, in those circles. In Euro 96, you, you won, I think, PFA Player of the Year mm -hmm. in 96, but didn't start a game. Yeah. Players Player of the Year and didn't, and didn't win a game, I didn't start a game in the Euros. Mm. That... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't start a game, I didn't even come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. forget starting again, we didn't even come on. Yeah. And um, I remember that was probably the, the, the worst time for me because, as you said, PFA played a year, OK, we didn't win the league that mm. year, but I felt I'd had a decent season and not to play a minute yeah. exactly. in Euro 96. I didn't really was not play a minute. Fair. You hadn't started again. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't I come that. on. I knew that as well because, I remember, obviously, I didn't get into the squad. Yeah. And I thought, well, Les and who's the um, PFA player of the year, and Robbie Fowler, who's doing what he's doing as well, playing well, you think, OK, but then to see none of them get even a minute. No, and, what, Robbie came on. Did Robbie, Robbie come on? Came what game did he come on? Because he came on in the first game. Because I remember after the, after the first game, um, we went to training the next day. Mm. Uh, some of the boys, the boys that played did the warm down and the yeah. ones that didn't did a little bit more. And I remember uh, Venables was pulling me and saying, look, I know you got the ump, um, but I know what you're capable of doing. I just needed to see Robbie. I hadn't seen Robbie. And so I needed to see Robbie. So Robbie came on. Mm. I was like, OK. No problem. And then in the end, it got to a stage where I was like, I was just going home. I was coming back to, <laughs> Ven I was coming back to the hotel in the afternoons and I was just going home. Mm. Yeah. Going, oh, it's, it's, it's Venables gave me the same talk, he, 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 but it was on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> he said, listen, I'm going to bring Fernando yeah. and Fowler in because I, I know what you could do. You scored all <laughs> But so that's, that's obviously that's what, that was his line was. Why do managers do that? Because they're almost setting themselves up for an even tougher conversation down the line. Yeah, it's it? almost like, it's well, nipping in the bud no. now. But did you no, do that with difficult. players? No, it's difficult. But when you have that many options, I can see why managers would obviously try and pull a player and almost giving you excuses, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult. It, yeah. Listen, it's difficult for a manager. You hope they're going to be up front with you, but you mentioned the players there. It's amazing the options a manager has. But maybe not to get on. I think that could be... We talk about going away playing for your country. It's great. And I was lucky when I went up, I generally played. But it must be frustrating for a player yeah. who is involved in their country, who's generally one of the main men for their clubs, obviously, like you were that year. One player of the season. One player of the... And they go away and... Um, yeah. It is. It's frustrating, isn't and, it? And I, and I said before the tournament, I, because I'd... Um, I'd 
before I, 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 I went to Newcastle, I'd scored 26 goals at, uh, at QPR in all competition the, the year before. Yeah. And I remember we went to uh, we went to Barbados end of the, end of the season on, on a, on a pre-season tour with QPR. And that's where I kind of like sat with Ray and said, look, you know, we're moving on and so on and so forth. We knew it was going to happen anyway. And um, it, was, uh, it was there that uh, there was the Umbro tournament coming up. Yeah, I played in that. Yeah, the Umbro tournament was coming up. And I was speaking to Doug Ellis, the, the late Doug Ellis, who was at Aston Villa at the time. Mr. Ta Mr. Tap Up. <laughs> yeah, and he was on, he was obviously at Villa at the time and blah, blah, blah. And uh, he was on the, uh, the England uh, FA, FA at the, yeah. uh, committee at the time. And he pulled me while I was in Barbados saying, um, we started talking, he was saying like, you know, we're going to try and sign you at the end of the season. I've, I've spoken to Richard Thompson and, and he's saying that if we bid, like, would you come and speak to us? And I said, well, if you bid and they accept the bid, then I'm going to come and speak to you. And he went, yeah, he goes, um, shame of that you're not in the, the Umbro tournament. And I went, what are you talking about? Mm. He said, um, have you not seen the, the thing? It hadn't come out yet, but hit the, obviously the committee had, had it. And I wasn't in the Umbro tournament. Everyone was in that. I <laughs> know, that's what I mean. I mean, I literally, I played 17 games for United. That was where David Unsworth, uh, Colin Cooper from Middlesbrough, there was like a, because everyone pulled out, didn't they? Yeah, that's what right, year yeah. was that? 95, year before yeah, the Euro. Yeah, that's right, yeah. My, 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 my debut for England there uh, was, I think it was 19 or 20, there was, it was against Japan and Brazil in that Umbro tournament. Yeah. Oh. It was like a tournament pre yeah. the, the tournament the year yeah. after the Euros. Oh, OK. And so I, I saw, like, I'd gone through that period and, I, and it was Doug Ellis that told me I was left out. Never spoke to Terry Vernon Woods, nothing, just mm. was left out of the Umbro tournament. And I didn't get back into the England squad until I was uh, around about November. Right. December after scoring the goals I was scoring at Newcastle and still being ignored and the papers were going, how comes he scoring all these goals yeah. and back in the England squad? And, what were you think, why would you think, dear, you aren't? I, I had no idea. And I, and I said to Venables, I, I actually said to him, when, I, when, it, when he called me back into the squad and we kind of like we had a conversation, I said, look, the truth is, if you don't fancy me as a player, I've got no problem with that. Yes. Just tell the world. Mm. Just tell everybody. I said, you're the England manager. They'll say, right, OK, if you think I'm a good domestic player, no problem, but I'm not, I, I don't cut it international. They'll listen to you. Why bring me into the squad? And he went, Les, Les, you know what's <laughs> <all> right. <laughs> Les, you know it goes. You even gave him an out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah. <laughs> did take me out. You know what I mean? Well, so, do you think that? I mean, Terry. To be fair, I think he would have wanted a, a striker, and he would have wanted one off. I think yeah. that, that that would have been certain. But do you think he thought you and Alan couldn't play together? Do you think that he was looking at you both, thinking I can't? Both of them just don't. You know, they just don't work together. And Shearer is my number one. Do you think it was as simple as that? It was simple as that. Yeah, I, I, I uh, that's the only thing I can, I can think of. He, he felt that me and Alan couldn't uh, play together. And, and when Keegan actually brought us together, he said, "Look, I'm not trying to prove anybody wrong. I just believe that you two can play together." Mm. And, um, and so, did you have a good partnership with Al? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did. In terms of the way in which you worked together, yeah. I mean, in terms of everything. Yeah, hundred percent. It was like you know we. You know, uh, it was never a problem. I'm, you know, I'd worked with so many forwards in, you know, at QPR. And back then, it was, you used to play two up front. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it was never a problem to, yeah. to, to adapt to whoever I was playing with. I never had a problem with it. That I was time as, as two front men. You know, if, it, like, if, if you made a run, if you was making a run into that channel, then you had to come and face up here just in case they wanted to do. You know, that's yeah. how it used to, it's yeah. like, when people know. say, oh, the two strike, they can't play together. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. Because back in the day, if you come short, then you have to be going long. Yeah. Those kind of things. That's what happens. It's got to be like lo lo simple those as that, wasn't it? Yeah. And, 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 and I always say about uh, I say about midfield players now. I said when you played, you weren't a holding midfield player. You played with Inchy. If Inchy went forward, you That's went. I, I tuck in exactly. here for him. If you went forward, Inchy go. I got to tuck in here. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so you just you just you just played off each other. Now it's like it's, it's become so, so structured, really, isn't it? Really like now, like this Quinn holding and... midfield player who never goes forward, who passes yeah. sideways and backwards and never goes forward. It's, it's... like Nal Quinn, Kevin Phillips partnership. Yeah. Yeah, they exactly. never happen now, yeah. do they? But they're so yeah. effective. Yeah. Like the big guy going up and then the little yeah. one running through. Yeah, getting the knockdowns. You had at the Palace. That's what you've done at Palace with yeah. Brighty. Brighty yeah. Yeah. had it with mm -hmm. Arsenal, with yeah. Alan Smith for a bit. Even with Kevin Campbell, people were saying, "Oh, we're kind of similar." Obviously, Kevin was a bigger guy, but Kevin, you know, I mean. But surely one of them will go for head is more than you, Absolutely. Riley, yeah. All of them. Okay. All of them. Right. Will be. Okay. All of them right. will be. I'm going to play a little quiz. We're going to go through the caps that you think those strikers got for England. Jill, Les, Roy and Ian. Michael Owen. How many caps for England? Yeah. 
we, we've got to be quick, oh, it's about 10 of them. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on, okay, uh, There's no praise at the end of it. Eh? What, Michael Owen? Michael Owen. Michael Owen. Don't give your guess away. Go. Sorry, sorry. <gasps> 57. I was going to say 50 fucking seven. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go... 54. Mm. A lot of injuries, didn't he? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd go about, like... Closer to six, 60 caps because it was he 40 goals or something. Right, to your one up 89. Wow, wow. Oh, yeah. 89. How many? I he must have thought he got he injured. Was, he did play right. when he was nine. How many, goal, <laughs> how many goals do you think he got? Goals. 40. 40. 40. How do you know that? Because he's a forward and I, I, I look at these things. Right. <laughs> Chris Sutton, I'm going to move around the, around the list. Oh. Oh. Chris Sutton, how many caps did he bring? Probably low. Um, oh, God. Probably one, isn't it? Yeah, it could be. Six. No, not even. I was going to go three. I'm going to say none. Well, he, he played for England. Oh, he did, right. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> under under his, I mean, he got Because he pulled out of that B squad. Yeah, All right, I'm going to say three. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one. One. I'm telling you, bro. Wow. Well, well I was near one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You know what? Because I like Andy Cole. Yeah. I Andy gave Cole. you that one and I oh. gave Andy Cole. Andy Cole. Great Andy Cole played, scored hundreds of goals. Oh. I feel like I'm that, He's trying to kid us on here. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, how many means... goals, how many caps did he play for England? Well, we're just doing it. Go on, go on, oh. I feel under pressure. Don't feel uh, under yeah. pressure. This is not pressure. Under 50. Uh, wow. Was he? Wow. Or more? Come on. Look at his guess. I don't know. I feel like you've given us up. Do you want to go uh, this way? We go this way yeah, so you get thinking. Let me go. Yeah, yeah, go you on. go first. We go this way, Jill. 11. 19. I was going to say 10. Yeah, I would have got uh, 23. 15. Oh. I don't know, it's 19. I think I'm nearest. One goal. 11, sorry. One goal. goal. 19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're both four away. Ian Wright, you're not allowed in. I, I know this. I am going to say 37. No more. You're really not. Is it? No, no, no. Jesus. I'm going to say 30. I was going to say, like, round 50. I was going to give you 50. 33. Oh. Wow. Nine goals. Yeah. Bad. Probably a lot of You were robbed. Shearer. Five against San Marino. Shearer. Oh, she was got a lot, truly. Shearer's... This is more your era of football than me. Eight, 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 no, I'm not... I'm no, say, not that tight. I'm going to say... No. 65. No. 68. I'm going to go 78. 63. Right. I thought you'd play more games. So did I. I did it all. Oh. Jesus, shit. shocks. I nearly got Les that Les Ferdinand. One. Not you, Les. Well, I'll he should it. have had more, I'm I think. I'm going to say 17 that's... or 19. I've got, I'm going to say... I'll go 18. I'll go 17. You've looked it up. I haven't 20, looked it up. <laughs> I, I haven't 20, looked it up because I'm just checking, I'm checking it with 17. I just my hand around. Around. But tell me, why... why I did, so when I look at... Les, your, your goals and ca your caps and goals, 17, five goals. Andy Cole, 15 caps, one goal. Um, Ian Wright, 33 caps, nine goals. Robbie Fowler, 26 caps, seven goals. These were great goal scorers, yeah, but, but for uh, England... Who, to be fair, I would say... But like, there must be the managers at the time, Todd. These are really brilliant players. They listen to be reasons at club level, but they'd have maybe... Not maybe doubts, or I'm going with a certain striker and I'll hang my hat on him, mm. would it be a sheer or whatever? And that's why lads would miss out. Because, and remember the, the gaps in between. Mm. Well. Yeah. Remember with Al, you know, Venable's done an unbelievable thing for Al with the two years yeah, leading up when score, he didn't score. Yeah. 19, and he, 19 games. To, to yeah. Exactly, to know. <laughs> Do you know it, Legend? Yeah. <laughs> 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 all of us. All of us. It's the games. kind of thing when you, yeah. hear, when you hear the conversation. So, can you imagine being a striker on the other side of that? Listen, for Shearer, amazing. Venable's yeah. having the, the yeah. faith. And in the end, paid, repaid the faith. But if you're a forward and you hear that, you, you know that you, what you're playing for. You're Look playing to Fowler. maybe be a substitute. How good was Robbie Fowler? Yeah, Robbie was yeah, unbelievable yeah, yeah. finish. He was an and how many caps did Robbie get? And Robbie how many goals? Five, Twenty. No, Robbie was 26 and only seven goals. See, I think these players, I think of them as being like 75, yeah, 80, yeah. like, yeah, it's mine. But Coley, but there's certain players who would go into the England squad, and not just England, international, and they just don't feel it or get on with the stat. And lads don't, they end up not going. Coley definitely stopped, didn't he? He kind of almost fell up with that side of it. Yeah. Yeah, because you go through the same thing. You're, like, you're going there and every time you play, yeah. it's not just the manager, but the press. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is his, his last chance. Yeah. His last chance. You think, hang on a minute. I've, I've, only, I've only had one chance. Mm, yeah. 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 The moral yeah. 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 stuff about Corley. Corley yeah. needed seven yeah. chances. Yeah, that was, that was a killer. And, and, but to be fair, I always remember when... That was, when, that was when, Glenn, on it? Yeah, when Glenn, yeah. Glenn came out and said, you need seven chances. I said, show me another centre-forward that gets seven chances yeah. in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, there's different ways of looking at it, of course. Yeah. 
you know, that's a tough one for Cody, I think. It, 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 you went to 98 as well and didn't play a minute. You went to two, sorry, two tournaments, so, 96. And you, no, you 98, but 96 and 98, you've gone to two tournaments. Maybe Les so, was a bad lad in yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Penny's dropped. You were wrong then. Yeah, we have to bring him. He's got loads of goals in Premier League. I'll tell you what, he's a bad lad around the place. The, 98 was, it was kind of really, really different because I went there. You, you'd yeah, broken but, your ankle, didn't no, you? No, 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 I done, tore my hamstring. Sorry, tore, tore his hamstring, so... Mm. I wasn't expecting. To, I wasn't expecting to go to '98 because I'd had a few injuries right. that season. Glenn Oddle put on a, a, a B team game at, a, at QPR for me and Latiz, mm. and um, played in it, scored and everything. And he goes, "I just need to get you some games. Yeah. I want to take you." And then he takes me to the. To, and then we was uh, in the Argentinian game, warming up. Mm. Glenn Roder comes and gets me from behind the goal. Says, "You're going on." So I come back, get my top on, blah blah blah. Walk to the sidelines with with, with Glenn. And we, he, we're standing on the side, and he's telling me, right, I'm taking Black Michael off. Blah, you're going on, and this, 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 this is what I want you to do. Mm. And going through all the bits and pieces. And as he does it, Bex falls Bex on the floor, off, yeah. kicks out at Simone. Oh. And as he kicks out at Simone, I look at Glenn, and Glenn looks at me. Because <laughs> 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 the referee's right. As the referee's running over to me, you know he's going off. He's going yeah, off. Because yeah, yeah, the yeah. way the referee's running over, he's a guy like this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right, and he's like, he's a good way to get I'm not going on, bro. Oh. I look at Glenn, and Glenn looks at me, he goes, Les, I've got to put someone on that can play midfield and get forward, and that was Paul Merce. Mm, Merce, yeah. So yeah. the guy sort of like re retreat back. Got, oh, yeah. Were you frustrated so in in '96 when you played Germany? They didn't make subs, did that? Were you expecting? Yeah, they didn't, yeah. didn't, and and, and come people, on, someone yeah. came on. What, what, what happened in that game? You know, with, uh, at Wembley, you're right next to the the, the, the benches, right next to the crowd, and all that, and all the crap was shouting, "Get Ferdinand on! Mm. Get Ferdinand! Venables, what are you doing? Get Ferdinand <laughs> on!" And he went like this. <sighs> And when he did that, yeah, that I, just was, went, you're done. I just went back yeah, and you're sat down. Like, oh, that probably it. wasn't done. helping, was it? Yeah. No, no, managers it are yeah. stubborn. Yeah, yeah. exactly. If the yeah. media push for a certain player, they go, yeah. no, I'm in charge. Yeah. Yeah. This, you should have hold the backs. Yeah. Yeah. It's Bex's fault. Yeah. Yeah. I used to sit on the bench and people would be like, we need to change it up. And the manager would look and be like, as if to say, we've got nothing well, we're, on we're the bench. And you'd be sat there like, hi. But yeah, I think managers can be... I don't know what that what Les like I bet you don't. It's funny because even listening to Les now, because obviously missing out on um, those squads, but then it would have been even worse, actually, like our Les, because you're so close, you're even closer. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you feel, especially when you, you know you're going into a squad, and, and I remember the, the Graham Taylor squad, you go into those squads buzzing because you're scoring and you get nowhere near it. Yeah. And that happened, you're thinking, oh, maybe next time. But then to get so close, because like, I, I used to think to myself, God, I didn't even get there. You know, but if I was that close and knowing the golden goal is in that like, tournament as well, remember? <laughs> you think, oh, come on yeah, and score the golden a, yeah. goal. And you don't yeah. get the chance when you've scored that many goals. It's a hard is it harder for a strike, you think? Because we all have a, you need a bit of ego, don't you, yeah, to play yeah, the yeah, top yeah, level. To be, again, you're obviously scoring goals at club level. And it's about being, you're the main man, then going away with your country, not getting a must yeah, be. Not, yeah. a, a defend, even your family getting in your rear, you know, must A defender, you don't want to come on. A defender, you don't That's want to come on. That's what I'm saying, it's a different, mm -hmm. a, a, a different yeah, challenge. A striker, you, you want to come on. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah huh? I used to be the one running up and down, like warming yeah, up, just funny. really being, Open. being Open. eager. Get your stats up. Walk, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> Honestly, I remember, sit, I remember sitting next to Farrell Williams and I went and started running for, it was Phil actually when he was in charge and there was two minutes left of this game and I was running and she was like, Jill, they're not going to put anyone on. And I was like, they might. And, <laughs> and I got on and I was I like, I don't it. think I touched the ball. I was like, it's another cap. It's they another might. cap. They <laughs> might. They might give us You never chance. touched the ball, you said? No. <laughs> Normal no. game, was it? <laughs> <laughs>
I said to him at the time, I said he had, I said to, uh, to Tim and, and Chris, he's got the shooting capabilities of Alan Shearer, mm -hmm. but he's got the intelligence of Teddy Sheringham. And, um, but I'm going to be honest, we, none of us saw him where he is today. Mm. We knew he'd have a career, didn't know whether it would be in the Premier League. Um, we certainly for weren't, sure we weren't, weren't sure about it. Weren't sure. Was that off the back of the, the, the loan moves in that? He wasn't getting like unbelievable. Yeah, reports, he wasn't getting. He weren't yeah, getting rave reviews. And I always remember him going to to Norwich, Norwich. Uh, and uh, Chris Hewton was there, and so he came back. He broke, unfortunately, broke his leg while he was at Norwich, and he came back. I remember calling Chris and said, "Look, how's it going?" I said, "Been to watch him a few times. What you thought?" And he went, "Well, he's not a number nine in in, in the, the, the sense of a Les Ferdinand, and he's not a number ten in the in the in the, in the, the sense of a, 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 a Teddy Sheringham." He said, I think he's a nine and a half. <laughs> That's what he said. That's wow. what he said. I think he's a nine and a half. And um, then he went, he, he went off to Leicester. Leicester, yeah. And I remember watching him going, I went to watch him play at Leicester. And if you ever watch Harry Kane jog, he's not, he's not easy on the eye yeah. when he jogs. <laughs> and I remember going to, to Leicester and I was standing in the crowd and the crowd were giving him a bit of stick because when he lost the ball, he'd jog him back. It looks yes. like he's gasping yeah. for it. And what age was he there, lads? When he was uh, on loan so at these clubs? Was so he still like, like a kid? Like, yeah, he was 19. Right. Okay. You know, 18, 19, 20, you know? And uh, he came back from, from like, they fired him back from Leicester. And I remember calling him after the game at Leicester and I said to him, look, when you're going back, do me one favour. I have a sprint. Or walk, mm -hmm. don't jog. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> not, and because what he was, he gives you everything he's got, mm. but his jogging just doesn't look <laughs> like he's like, 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 you know, looks like he's like. So um, I said, just either sprint or walk, guys. You know, man. He's like, yeah. And then they fired him back. He came back to to, to the training ground. I always remember it. And he, he, it was like something clicked inside him, mm. and he and he realised whatever he was doing weren't enough. So he became the first player into training ground. Wow. And when everybody had gone in the afternoon, he was in the gym, he was doing boxing, he was doing everything just to get his weight down, to get himself back in shape. And then, and then when we took over, when Tim took over as manager and we was, we was there, he was chomping it to bit to get in the side. And Who was up front at the time? Was it Salgado? Or Salgado, Salgado, was, Salgado. Up, was up front and we was like, well, we can't. And, and the thing is, that I always remember if Harry played after five, ten minutes, if he hadn't scored, they were singing Zelda, da, Zelda. Yes. And so we, we was protecting him. We was, yeah. we was stopped because we didn't want him to go through that. But he was chomping it to bit. And then in the end, we just, we, 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 we unleashed him and he, he just started going and he's just not stopped. Finishing in training. Was his finishing in training always on point? Yeah. We used to, um, at, at times I'll take, I'll take a shooting session after, after training and there was Ericsson, there was Harry Kane. Um, Addy Boyle would join in. There was, there was a few of them. The level of finishing was just incredible. Mm. And he was always in there. Mm. He was always in there. He People who walk him say, you do not realise the power he has until yeah. you're obviously walking yeah. close yeah. up with him. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah. And a lot of the forwards Shoot. from England as yeah. well. But, but they always say, who was you in pro? He said, Harry yeah. Kane's finishing. He's mm. right foot and left foot as well. Right foot and left foot. Yeah. Both same. So, both same. Yeah. And that's where I'd probably put him above Allen in terms of shooting. Wow. You know, well, he, better finish it out. Yeah, in, in terms of his right foot's as devastating as his left yeah. foot. Yeah. Alan's great on his right foot. He's he'll left get foot, it done with you. He'll get it done, but hey, he's very, very competent on, the, on, on his left side. Do you like him when he does drop into them 10 positions? Because sometimes when I watch England, I'm like, he's so, sometimes he'll make goals where he's got such a long range passing. Mm. But sometimes I'm like, let the midfielders do it because we want you yeah. in the box yeah, finishing. Yeah, there was a time where but, I was watching him. The, the thing is, everyone started talking about, ah, oh, he's, dropping, into, he's yeah. dropping a bit deeper and all that. But he's always done it. Yeah. People just never saw it before. You know, it's always it's just something they spoke about because like coming up, that's, he used to drop into those positions and he'd make goals for people, but he'd get forward as well and score. But it's great when you see a player like a Kane where people can write a player off at 17, 18, yeah, or if he's yes. at 19 uh, stage, yeah, and yes. he's out and low and you go, yeah. and then something happens for a player. Just Amazing. having that patience, yeah, particularly yeah. for a striker, you, maybe they get more of a benefit of the doubt sometimes. And then for the just change like that, as you said, he just the penny drops, you have you to know put the penny in. You know, you know who else was that? Like Andy Cole. Yeah. Cole, yeah. Right. Andy Cole. Yeah. You know, they done when the he's a young kid at Arsenal. Yeah, what? yeah. When he's a young kid at Arsenal. He went to Bristol on loan. Yeah, went, and then just absolutely. He, he, I remember he went on loan. What? Because I, when I got when I got there, he went on loan to Fulham. Then he went on loan to Bristol. Then he came back. And then he got yeah, bought Bristol by Bristol. Bristol bottom, yeah. But like that's some, they they would say at, um, Arsenal people were saying that he probably won't score more than twelve goals a season right, where yeah. he was and the, yeah. the way he played. And to be to be fair to him, when he was training, it's, it's, he's Andy Cole's how he is. He's, yeah. He does his stuff, but. Like he, something clicked at Bristol, and then obviously yeah. you get him to Newcastle yeah. with yeah. Beardsley and all that lot. He turned into a monster. He went supernova. Yeah. And again, it comes down to what you're saying there, Roy, about 
people kind of writing people off at that age. Mm. What kind I mean, of personality was Corley then? Was he a bit... Cause he's, you know what? He's he still... Was like, bit, no, he's still surly because like, that's the thing with Andy. Even at United, he was a bit... What's the no, he's, he's just... What, I wouldn't say surly. He's just... Yeah. He's just in himself. Yeah. He's just... Oh, I like Corley. Yeah. I get on well, but sometimes you know what I mean? but people might never take him the wrong way. And that's, and that's what happened for his career. Yeah. Yes. I think that's what happened in his England career. Yes. People took him the wrong way. People took him the wrong yeah, way, but like... Probably a good lad. You know? Great lad. Yeah. Exactly. You know, somebody that... what Everybody's got to be... A jester mm. or a jovial, and, and yeah, you know yeah. the, the the great thing for for for, for Harry and, and some of the younger players that came through at Tottenham in the end was because we'd been where they'd been. Mm. You know, Tim Sherwood had been where they'd been, Chris Ramsey had been where they'd been. I come in, I come into the game late. Yeah. Was we knew that they needed a chance, they needed an opportunity, and an opportunity ain't one game because yeah. you get a lot of the time a player goes in. If he's not yeah. the young player, not yeah. the best player in the first two games, I yeah. know he's not mm. ready yet. Mm. You know, what I mean, we pers persevered, and we used to say to Harry Redknapp all the time. Just afford him the same opportunity you yeah. affords El Dardo. Mm. Because El Dardo, I know you've paid 30 million, and he, to pay 30 million for someone, he must have done it somewhere. Yeah, something, yeah. But you'll give him an opportunity to, yeah. to develop. And the fans mm. love a, a lot of kids. get extra kind of bonus points for that. Yeah, and but I, managers under pressure. I, 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 don't, you know? I don't know if that's always the case, because I always think sometimes, you know, uh, supporters talk about we love a young player coming through. But sometimes they don't give him the, the, of course. the time to oh, come Oh, yeah, through. listen, it's yeah. different yeah. type of pressure. Yeah. But if he does hit the ground and he then, starts doing well, yeah. then they're one fully behind own. him. He's yeah. one of That's our own, huh? <laughs> you're, probably, you're probably one of the best place people to look at, and that, it's probably a bit of a pub question, but Shearer versus Kane. You play with Alan Shearer, obviously you work with Harry Kane. Who do you select if you have to make a decision? Oh, Gary, you're wow. Well. Oh, that's that's, 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 that's wicked. That's wicked. That's beanie pants. Wicked. Jeez, beanie that's pants. Wicked. But we're gonna, Both together. <laughs> but what I'm saying to you is you've got to pick one and you've worked with Harry Kane, you've played well, with Alan Shearer. You've, you've, you've got to not, give us something, Les. These are both great. <laughs> <Ray. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> don't bother, Les. This is the headline. <laughs> this is the headline. Nah, this is, it's got to yeah. be Kane, hasn't it? You're out of order. That's tough. Really tough. Um... Be diplomatic, bro. <laughs> no, I'm going to be diplomatic, but I, I would I would go with Shearer at the moment because I play with him and I know I, I can't. I, I work with I work with Harry, <laughs> no. but I'd probably go with, yeah. still with, with Alan. Well, yeah. you know, and, and, I always thought I never thought he'd go to Munich. I never thought he'd leave the country. I thought he was destined to break Alan Shearer's Premier League record. I agree. Do you still think he's got that in his mind and that he's coming back here in a year's time to go somewhere to break that record? As long as he comes back to Arsenal, he'll have a chance to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what a sign and He ain't going there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you surprised he left, Nev? I just didn't think, to be fair, he would go... I, I just thought that, the, for me, the England record... He'd be that the, hung up about the Premier League. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. Look, he had to escape. He had As to get out. As a striker, though. He I, mean, made, not strikers, I, mean, I just thought about Bayern Munich. It, it was a thought that I had that he would go to a yeah. Premier League club and he would go and try and break a record. Yeah. He may he may have had to have escape abroad yeah, to from come Daniel Levy to come yeah. back. Yeah. How many is he behind? Forty, I think. How many is he behind? About forty. Something yeah, like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Could do something that. like forty. I still think he could do it. He could do that. Yeah, because how old is he now? 29, is he? Is that all he is? About 30 now. 30. You know something? Harry Kane. Could, could, if, in the right team. He's 47 behind Alan Shearer. So he'd need two yeah. seasons back, wouldn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's not going to come back somewhere where he's not going to be on the end of things, getting one-touch finishes and stuff like that. You don't know what's going to happen with Haaland, how long he's going to stay. Yeah. Imagine if Haaland left, like, next season and Harry Kane came to Man City. He could probably do that in a season. I always yeah. think if Kane had gone there instead of Haaland... He would have smashed that record, yeah. wouldn't yeah. he? Absolutely oh, yeah. smashed oh, yeah. it. Yeah. That's another. That's a different story. That one. <laughs>I want to ask you about two things. One is about the Tottenham and the... He's probably been more critical of Tottenham than anybody over the last few years in terms of the flaky tag. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the... No, 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 I don't. <laughs> well, just how, does, how does that sit with you? And how did it sit in the club? And where, sort of, do you feel... You know, is it unfair or do you feel it's just a case of, obviously, they have underachieved, there's no doubt about that? Yeah, I think if you look over the, over the, over the years, um, they've, they've, they've got that tag and they have to wear it because that's, that's how they've been. Whenever you think Tottenham have climbed the mountain, it comes like they ski back down it again, do you know what I mean? And they're starting from, from, from zero again. I'll be, Daniel Levy's done a great job in getting the club to where it is, but it's just the investment in, in the players. He and just the, doesn't want to take management. that. Look, at po Pochettino was a perfect example of him backing a manager at that stage. He wanted yeah. to get loaded in. He wanted to... Because they'd just come out of the, Champion, um, the Champions League final. They lost, what, they finished second. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, if there's any time for an owner, Les, 
to go, you know what I mean? I'm going to go in on this guy. Mm. You know what I mean? That would probably was the time. But, but Les, I, I, I once said that he's the best operator in football because when you look at what he's done off the pitch, yeah. I mean, the stadium and the training ground are the best. They're unbelievable. Yeah. And properly apart from cities in terms of training ground, but the training ground's fantastic. Why does he not hand over the football side to... Why, why does he... Does he? I mean, he obviously interferes on the football side. What is, why won't he get that bit? I got no idea. I think he's 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 got this reputation of being the, the, the wheeler dealer that he is, and he's done some fantastic deals in terms of players going out of Spurs uh, when they're ready to when they're ready to leave. Top bird, and, top dollar. and I think he he just enjoys that that part of it. He enjoys being involved in it. He enjoys making those decisions, and he's not alone um, in terms of chairman and and and. and, and other oh, directors was, wanting to yeah. be involved in, in, in certain parts of, of the football club that they should leave well alone. But um, you know, he's done should some, he leave it well alone? I think he's done some he's done some great deals, and I think he's he's brought a, a fellow called Scott Munns in now, who he said he's gonna he's he's gonna take over the the, the day to day running of the, the the football club. It's yet to be seen. I think he's um he's so heavily involved in it that people still go to him, and um, he I, I don't see him putting that mantle down anytime soon. It's a shame because I'm sure the fans, listen, the fans want an unbelievable stadium and but they want to win things. Tottenham, yeah, they, but they've not won for 30 or 40 years. Why are they just putting it on Levy in the last 10 or 15 years regarding the new stadium as if that's all he's obsessed with? Spurs have been like that for, yeah, for a long time. For a long, long time. Yeah, but they, they get to a place and then it just, it just kind of plays out. But like, that's the next what I'm saying about the, Pochettino. But the next bit is the hardest bit. That's for lots of football clubs. Yeah, but then that's up to yeah. Levy to make the decision. If, what, more, what more does Pochettino have to do to say, listen, we finished second, we got to the Champions League, I just need a little bit more. Yeah, always, get, always, somebody has to take the leap. I, the I always the think as well, though, with, 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 with managers, uh, managers lose their job and it, it's never normally just about results. There's something more yeah, going of course. on. Of course. Yeah. There's something more going on than just the results. So we look at it and go, well, Pochettino was doing great and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But there's something else something going else on. Yeah, explain what you mean with that, Les, with your Tottenham experiences. I say just my, not just my Tottenham experiences, but being in the, in the role that I was as a director of football at QPR. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you, you, you lose a manager and people go, well, why have you done that? Because the, the, the manager's not sticking to the plan that, right. that he's come in to do. And the change room's lost. And so people don't see that part, they just see results. And they go, right, OK, well, he was doing OK. Why haven't you not backed him? Well, you ain't backed him because he's not doing what you asked him to do. Mm. Where did you find that at QPR? We'll come on to QPR in a bit in your role there, but where did you find that at QPR? Well, I found, I found out a lot of times where managers came in and you, you, you sit down and you say, right, this is what we're looking for in a manager, because this is what QPR needs, not what Les Ferdinand needs. This is what QPR needs. And um, so we, 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 we set out where, where the things are. Um, what the criteria is for, what would for that managing. Mean? Just give us so, two or three things that you'd look for. So we was we was about development at QPR, mm. right? We got relegated from the, the, the Premier League, which we knew was going to happen. We had to change everything that was going on in terms of we had some what I'd call experienced players on quite a, a lot of money. Mm. Yeah, you and turned we, the budget from seventy odd million did you, down to yeah, 17, 17 or eighteen. That's wow. right, seventy eight million, and we had to and, and try and stay competitive in the, in the championship and doing yeah. that. And it, at the times that when we were in, like I mean, under Mick Bill, we was. We was top of the league at one stage, and we was the 14th best players in the league at the time. So we were overachieving. You know, when we was in the, in sixth place under Mark Warburton, we were overachieving because we were 15th or 16th best players in the in the championship. But what happened was, you get managers come in and they they go they agree to what you you know the criteria of what you're looking for. Of course. Uh, in terms of job, we man. needed to develop players. So the likes of uh, uh, Bireze comes in and goes out. You know. Um, starts in the academy with uh, with uh, Chris Ramsey and Paul Hall and those guys. We get him to a level, gets into the first team. We sell him for 20, nearly 20 million pound. That has to. That was our model. That's what mm. we needed to do. Yeah. And then managers come in and we say, well, this is this is what we have to do because for 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 QBR to be sustainable, yeah. this is what we That's need to do. Have to happen. Yeah. This is what has to happen. And then they want to change that and go, well, OK, uh, I need this senior player and I need it. And I know you need some senior players in, in your squad to help those younger players, but I can't keep going senior players because mm. that means yeah. we've got no value in the squad. And that's what I inherited when I came to, the, when I came to the, 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 the club. So when they start going away from that, that's when you need to make changes. Beal didn't oh. stay very long, did he? Yeah, that was that was disappointing. 20-odd games. Yeah, that was disappointing because yeah. he'd got us to the top of the league and he had the boys eating out the palm of his hand. Mm. Yeah. Um, the problem with the championship, though, as you know, is like to, to, if every every club would believe they can get in them playoffs, 
But the average age, as you know, in the championship to get promoted is 29. Mm. So the experience does. I understand your, what the plan might be, but if that's the plan and you're not winning every week and you do need, you do, you need a mixed bag, obviously. Yeah. And you're not winning every week. That's where the manager, young players are one good. I think, if there's, as you know, if there's too many young players in your team in the championship, they get eaten alive. Mm. Yeah. So it's, a, it's obviously a tough it's, balancing it, act, isn't it? It? It, it, is, it is trying to get that balancing act right, but at the same time, you you have to understand what your what your what your position is. And um, as I said, like I went into keep on. If I could, if I when we got relegated, if the owners had said to me, look, the, the parachute money and everything else is going to help us get back to the Premier League. Now go and get the players that we need. Go okay. No, that wasn't the case. The case was we needed to trim the squad and just try and survive in the Championship right. that next season. Okay. Yeah. Because everyone's talking about financial fair play now at all the, the, the Premier League clubs. We had that eight and a half years ago. You got whacked, didn't you? I got whacked, eight, 40 million pound. Wow. So you had that on top of the excess wages that you had mm. at the football club. So you had to trim all that down. So you had to get, you know, so most of your parachute payments went on paying these guys to leave your football club. Wow. Because they were sat there. No other club was coming in to take them. Who were those players at the time that you were talking? It, it was, it, it, I mean, there was some big, you were on big money, didn't you? <laughs> that QPR team that went down, I and mean, I was working on Sky at the time, I said that's one of the most difficult sides I've ever had to watch. It was difficult in that Premier League season. It was, they, they weren't putting a shift in some of them, were they? Exactly, and so you had, you had those players that were on, you know, 60s and 70 grands a week at, at QPR. I mean, I remember QPR, it, yeah. when QPR went down, they were the fifth best players in the Premier League. And an it's average fine. gate of 14 and a half thousand. So, you know, so those players weren't going to leave your football club. Gosh. You know, they, they, because no one else was going to take them on the money that they were on. So the only way you get rid of them is to, to, to pay them to go. Because what, what was happening is the boys that you were bringing into the club, all right, the, the, the new signings, which were of a lesser grade than the players that were already there, were, you're bringing in on 15s and 20s. And, and the boys that are on the 60s and 70s are talking about how crap this football club is. Mm. And those boys that are coming in going, yeah, this must be crap because we're running around and these boys are in the treatment room yes. not wanting to play. And they're saying how crap this is. It must be crap because we're running around and they're not. Yes. So the culture wouldn't have been great. So the culture us. wasn't great. So you're trying to change them. And then when you get rid of those, those big, the, the big earners, you realise the boys that you brought in for 15s and 20s shouldn't even be on 15s and 20s. Wow. So you've got to get rid of them as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so is there a desperation why you bring those guys in because you feel like we need to bring these guys in and then all of a sudden That's when they've it. gone, you realise, well, these ain't the guys. That, that is the word, right? Really. So, 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 and when you say desperation, it's, it's the desperation is, no, you're bringing in players that you, you're hoping are going to take the club to where it needs to be and, and stabilise it. But they get caught up in the poison of those, those, those senior players. Yeah. That is, they're talking about how crap the football club is, and then you think, well, hang on, I brought you in to do a job, yeah. and they are—they're doing a job to the best of their abilities. But then, when those senior players are gone, you then realise that you know what, these are quite not not where they need to be. Was coaching a lot easier than being director of football? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was stressful. Really it was. He seemed quite laid back guy, but was it was it stressful? Yeah, you know, it's, it, sleepless it's nights. That type yeah, of course, yes. because anything that you're doing, you want it to be successful. You're going to give it your all, and I gave it my all. So I, I went to every game. I was away at home, home and away, and you want the team to be successful. Yeah. And you're you're in the hands, like a manager, you're in the hands of the manager and the players to go out and perform. But it must be heartbreaking knowing there's players at your club, whatever role you had at the time, and they're coming in their bad moment in the club, and they're not putting a shift in. To me, that's... The, it's the worst feeling. It is, isn't it? It's the worst feeling in the world as a, as a, as a former footballer. Yeah. Um, in my role, seeing people coming in. And the one thing I, I always felt in, in my career is I, wherever I was, I gave it my all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Win, lose or draw, I gave it my all. You know, you, of course, you have bad games, you play bad games, but you give it your all. And you see people coming in. And Did you have boundaries with people? Were you tempted to be get more hands-on? Yeah, I was. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I was you know what I mean? I'd, right. I'd, 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 so, you know, one player come in from pre-season. Right? Comes into the training ground at pre-season. And people don't know, these are the stuff that you deal with. Player comes in and we arrange pre-season and you're back in on the ninth of whatever. And um, he calls up the secretary and says, when, when are we back in? Wow. She said, well, you've had the letter. And I said, that, yeah, he's had the letter. He knows he's had the, you had to sign for it, so he's had the letter. So he calls up, when, when we back in? She said, well, you know when we're back in. We, we've told you, but I'll, I'll, I'll send you another letter. This is the day we're back in. Comes in two days later. Jesus. Just turns up two, turns days, up two yeah. days later. Was that from the Premier League to the Championship yeah, season? Yeah, we're coming in the Championship. So now this is a Premier League player, no longer wants to beat your football club. So he comes in late for training. So um, I, said to the, I said to the secretary, no problem. Just have this letter waiting for him. So letter... Two week fine, 
Mm. Right, so he comes through the door, goes out of train and he comes in my office afterwards and he says to me, don't you think um, two weeks is a bit much for only two days? I said, you taking fucking piss? <laughs> I said, you've come in my office, you haven't even apologised or mm. given me a reason why you're late. Mm. You've just come in here and said to me, isn't two weeks wages is a bit harsh for, for two days. Was it, it was publicised at the time, though, was it? Was it, tra was it trapped? No, 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 it wasn't trapped. No, it wasn't trapped. It wasn't. Did you try and check that off? No, I was thinking it wasn't. No, it wasn't late. Tony Adams. Sorry, adult trapped. Sorry, Adam. I thought you were going to say that letter was like you're leaving. If I was managing, so I know you can't do that. But that's what you'd want to do, wouldn't you? That's what you want to do, but then, you know what happened? Find him two weeks' wages, Get a call from the PFA. Of course you do. Yeah. yeah. Say, so, Les, look, you, you, can, you can take this to, to 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 where it needs to be, but you yeah. take it to the, all the PFA are going to recommend, or all they're going to recommend is that you find them a week's a wages week, and yeah. you suspend you suspend the other. Yeah. God, that's. Do you have to give them a week? Do you give them a week, or do you, Sorry? Stick, do you stick with the two weeks? Or do you I, give I them... try to stick with the two weeks, but the PFA, say, this is all that's going to happen. And so then all of a sudden, does that player then now he's got the ump with you and he's vexed because yeah. like because you've tried to do that. And then it's gone down to a week, so he thinks he's got one over on you. Yeah, it's broken. It's, it's, it's broken. Yeah. Yeah. It's broken. But the place was broken. It's broken. The, yeah. the place the was fact broken. He came back time. two weeks, uh, two days late. late. Yeah, yeah it's, it's broken. broken. Then you finished. That's that. sacrilege yeah. in preseason. Exactly. That's Sacr what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And that, but that was the attitude of some of the senior players that we had there back, back in the top, back, back in the day. And you just had to put things in place and, and try to get rid of the ones that you could get rid of, and, and that's what we had to do. And it was yeah. tough. It was tough. And. You it's know, the hardest part, isn't it? People talk about getting players into your club. It's getting players out. Yeah, isn't that's, that's, the, that's the tough out. part. When you know, that kind of wages. When I, when I look back on it, you know, from 78 million down to, you know, last year I was here, we was operating just over 10 million. You know, wow. loads of frees, loads of... And, and like I said, Mick Bill had a uh, top, of the, top of the league yeah. with free transfers and free loans, right? With top of the league. And unfortunately, he decided to go. And once he left, it was... Um, like I said, he had the players eating out the palm of his hands. Yeah. Mm. And um, when he left, there was a, there was a disappointment yeah. around the place with the players and stuff like that. They, we were onto something here. Yeah. And, and I, felt, I felt for Neil Critchley, who came in after him, because those players were now in the doldrums and he was yeah. trying to lift them and he, he just couldn't do it. Yeah. And so um, it, got, it got a bit toxic yeah. uh, in the end. And, you know, when I look back on it, you know, in my time, in eight and a half years here, we spent 33 million in, in bringing players in. But we sold 55 million's worth of talent, yeah. and um, so that, that left them in a, it, with, with a profit. But yeah. you know, people don't see that; they just see what's going on on the pitch yeah. at the moment. My first question to you, which we've been going 50 minutes. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> first question. What have you been up to in the last eight months? <laughs> Flying his helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what have you been up to? Obviously, you left eight months ago. Yeah. What have you been up to? I've just been a, doing a bit of TV stuff here and there. Mm. Um, you know, you, you, you sit down and reflect on, on, on what you've gone through. Um, I'm now on the, you know, just to keep myself busy and ticking over, I'm on this uh, LMA uh, uh, postgraduate leadership course. Okay. Just keeping just keeping the skills going and, and, and topping mm. up and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Um, so are you looking to go back into what you've done previously? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. like to. Um, you know, I felt I've learnt a lot at, uh, at, at QPR. Um, uh, we had to do it a bit differently. And um, I worked under a very good CEO in Lee Hughes, who, who, who it was really helpful to me while I was on, uh, while I was at QPR. And I feel like I've learnt a lot and I'd like to have another go. Was one of your biggest frustrations agents or were you OK with agents? I was OK with agents because I'm, I'm pretty straightforward. You know, I used to say to them, like, you come, you come through the door, we sit down, and I, they go, right, I'm looking for X amount of money for this. Uh, this is what my player's worth. And I go, just shake hands. Let's, let's forget it, mate, because we're nowhere near that number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you're looking for, you ain't going to get it at this yeah. football club. Yeah. Yeah. I go, what? I say, no, no, no. What, the old QPR that you're thinking about, yeah. this isn't yeah. anymore. So, in the end, agents was... I had no okay. problem with the agents here. Yeah, it really it, it's interesting what you said before about you feeling let down by managers not sticking to the plan. Mm. I think when we asked you about managers going into football clubs, I mean, maybe probably a couple of months or so ago um, on this um, programme, Roy said he felt that clubs weren't that genuine with managers in terms of explaining it the other way. Yeah. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So Roy felt it from a manager. No, just, yeah, my point was that everyone has great plans at the start, yeah. but then if you start losing games, you, you, your so-called project or whatever, and it walks both ways from the yeah. club and the manager, Panic sets in and the, the, just the plan almost goes out the window. The, the one thing I'll say about the, 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 
the guys that I worked for. And the reason why I ended up staying there for as long as I did was they were very adamant that this is what we wanted and they would stick to that plan. Yeah, okay. And even when things were going wrong, they'll call the manager, don't worry, we're fine. We do. Mm -hmm. I, I, we, I know it's about winning games, we want to win games, but we understand where we are as a football club. And this is what our model is. We need to produce players because you know, we're putting in X amount of money every year and we want to reduce that, but we're going to reduce that by selling players. So it's about development. We need to develop. Even now, players. even where they are at the moment, they even, can go to League One. There's... I mean, obviously they don't want to go to League right. One. Um, but it still has to be about development because that's the only way uh, to get QBR money are going really. to progress because the owners are, are quite wealthy. But as we're seeing with a lot of clubs in the Premier League now, you can't put that money into the football club because of the financial fair right. play situation. Mm -hmm. And that's where QBR have been for, like I said, eight and a half years. How did you see it, Les? There was a regulator introducing football and I'm not going to go into the technicalities of that, but as a championship club and you see the parachute clubs coming down with all that might and then they go back up again, which is happening more and more. Oh, yeah. Do you feel that the Premier League needs to be kinder to the rest of the pyramid? Yes. You're, you've been at, obviously, championship level. And I, I would say that because I've been at championship level. I think if I was in the Premier League, I was saying, you know, you, you, you fend for yourself. I've, you can't fend for yourself if you're not allowed to, to spend the money that you've got to spend. What, like your owner's got your money? Yeah, so the owners have got the money, but they can't spend it. You can only lose 13 million a year, is it, in the championship? 13 that's, million, the, that's the sustainability yeah. rule, isn't it? Yeah. So, so I've, were, you, were you losing 13 million every I, year? Yeah, without a shadow of that, yeah. So you yeah. couldn't spend more money? We couldn't, we couldn't spend more money. So that was the problem. So that's why we was, we was bringing in freeze and, and, uh, and loans, because we couldn't spend the money. So we had to do that to, to enable to, to, for the club to be sustainable. A lot of clubs, like you go to Leeds, for instance, every other week they get 30-odd thousand, mm. yeah? Plus, during the, during the week, their stadium is used by uh, the boxes you used and people you yeah. can have business meetings in there. QBR, because of where it is, there's no parking. Right. So QBR's stadium only became sustainable on, on, a, on, a, on a match day. Yeah. So the rest of the time... You there's no other income. No, no other income yeah. coming into the football club. Why did you leave? It just got too toxic for me. And, um, with what, the owners or no, the, the players? The, or? The, the great thing for me was the owners didn't want me to go. Um, right. You know, I, I had various meetings with them, had various dinners with them, asking me not to go. Um, but with the, with the fans, it became toxic, you know. And you know, I was thinking, what, why do I need to take this? Do you know, what I mean, I don't. Uh, you were getting the sort of blame. Yeah, for I was getting, I was getting the blame for a lot of things, and I just felt, you know, I've put my heart and soul into this. Yeah. Um, and listen, I think you know, going into the role at some stage, you're going to come, you're going to come in for some flack. It's like, uh, and you flatness, are you like getting like abuse on match days? Yeah, like, and, really and nasty stuff. Like, stuff yeah. I want to say nasty stuff, it, it, never to my face. Do you know what I mean? Right, it was just right. like you know, and um, on social media and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm not on social media. I'm not on anything apart from WhatsApp. But um, my kids and yes. you know, my family read all that, so I'm thinking, yeah. what do I need that for? You know, it's, it's got to a stage where it's just, it just became too toxic, and I thought it was time for me to step aside. Mm. You, you said a quote that when you left, you said, some of the criticism that came was because of my colour. I always say to people, if I was a bad director of football, it wasn't because of my colour, it was just because I was a bad director of football. If I was a good director of football, it wasn't because of my colour, it's because I was a good director of football. Yeah. Where did that come from? What, 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 what experiences had you had at QPR in that period that you know, made you feel like that at the end to say that? Again, uh, again at, uh, at the end of it, not, well, not at the end of it, it, it started from the beginning, mm. really, because when, 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 uh, when I first joined QPR, I came in as director of football and um, Harry Redknapp was the manager. Harry Redknapp left uh, in the end of January, when we, at the end of the transfer window. So uh, Chris Ramsey took over as interim uh, boss and he was, he was doing some coaching. The boys had said some, some really nice things about him on social media, which the owners saw about, you know, we're being coached and this is great and blah, blah, blah. So the owners came to me and said to me, do you think Chris Ramsey could keep us in the, in the, in the championship next season? I said, well, we're not going to try and get promoted. And they went, no, 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 we can't. And, and sort of like explain the, the yeah. situation with the financial fair play and what that was going to cost them and, and, and trying to get rid of some of the players. So I said, if you're talking about just keeping you in the championship, I think Chris has got the capabilities to do that without a shadow of a doubt. I said, OK, no problem. Anyway, I suppose my naivety, my naivety of going into the job at the time was I thought we could get rid of the players that we had. Right. Not realising the money that they was on, no one was going to pay them that type of money. So. Um, when we got to close to the start of the season, realised we couldn't get rid of the players that we had. The owners went, we need to try and get promoted now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Without adding, adding anything to it, we need to try and get promoted because we ain't been able to get rid of these players. And if we don't get rid of, the, if we don't get these, rid of these players and we don't get promoted, yeah. we're going to get done again. Yeah. 
Jesus Christ. So that's where we were. So that's when um, Neil Warnock came in for a little bit with, with Chris Ramsey and, and, and tried to help. Um, and that's and at the same time, we had to try and look for a manager that we felt could um, stabilise us, uh, try and push for promotion, but at the same time, um, make sure we didn't get relegated as well. So uh, at the time, we employed Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. And the way, what we did, we had a real democratic type of uh, voting system at, at QPR. So myself and Lee Hughes would go and interview 20, 30 different managers. We worked it down to five, the five best that we thought was in the, in, the, in the style that QPR wanted to play with. And then the owners would come in on the interviewing process and they would want to have a chat and so on. So we went through that and then we put it to a vote. And at the time of, of voting, Jimmy, Jamie, Jimmy came out on top. And um, so I employed Jimmy after Chris Ramsey and then the press started saying, are you, going, are you doing it the other way? Mm -hmm. Are you now being racist and right. <laughs> boy and black right. manager? But at the time, what they didn't realise that Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, when we employed him, had the bin best win ratio of any manager in, in the whole of England. Mm. Yeah. Right, but they didn't look at that. They just looked at the fact that I'd employed another black manager and, and it started from there. And then, and then some of the supporters started going, oh, he's bringing the black mafia in. Mm. And it sort of like, sort of like started from there. And then towards the end, it was, um, you know, Chris Ramsey was in place. Uh, Paul Hall had already been in place in the, in the, in the, in the academy <coughs> before I, I got to the club. And so I used to get, you know, journalists come and say, you've got the most diverse uh, football club in, in the country. Um, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I said, I've, I've employed more Caucasian people than I have black people. Why do you want to do a uh, have a conversation about yeah. the black people that work at QBR? Yeah. Or the black coaches that work at QPR. I've employed more Caucasian people. Why are you not talking about that? And so it started from there, and then the, the, sort of like the, the, the some of the fans picked up on it. It's really weird because you know some of the former players that was at QPR started pit, you know adding their penny worth of wow. that stuff into into what, it, and it became what, like when what were they, what kind of what sort of they, yeah they 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 were, they were saying like oh you you know you're just employing black players yeah. now and stuff like that and what so players that you're left? Just... yeah players that had left no, no no sort of like former players that had been at the club before right you know, you're just like employing experience. the best people for the job though and you know what we did Joe in the end we 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 what what we had we had a policy of not even looking at looking at um, people's names we just looked at the CVs first and foremost. They said, okay, this is the job, this is the job spec. Um, does this CV match the job spec that we're looking for? So you wouldn't it, have a name or a picture of the person no. and you'd just look at the CV to look try and... So you, but so, because of the accusations... No, no, we, 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 we felt that was the best way. Just right. eliminate any, any, any prejudice yeah, okay. in any yeah. way. Just look at the CV and say, right, this is the job spec that we've, we've put out there. Which CVs match that job spec? Yeah. Mm. And then you look at the names. And then you go, OK, right, let's get this person and let's get that person. But we'd already made a decision based on that CV that we... That we was that something you had to bring in yourself so as people didn't accuse you of this? Or is that something that was just there anyway? You didn't have the names on the CV? In the end, we felt, based on some of the courses that I'd been right. on, we just felt this, that was the best avenue to go down rather than it was anything to do with what, what colour... Well, it's always a reminder as well about trying to get a, trying to get a manager that fits your club, isn't it? Like yes. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Obviously, never you've experienced it at Salford trying to get that manager, you can interview him, but I still don't think you know the dynamics of a manager or his personality, I think, until he's in the... No, you he's in, Until he walks in that yeah, door. Yeah, yeah. Again, interviews, I'm always intrigued what makes a good or a bad interview, yeah. whatever about a person's CV, you're on about Jimmy, for example, good win ratio, but sometimes a, a manager can come in, timing, yep. and it just... Does, There's no logic to yeah, it, yeah. it's yeah. just yeah. The, the timing, or yeah. it's got to be the right fit for the club. And like I said, you know, Michael Bill came from nowhere. Right. Out of nowhere, no one was talking. I mean, people were talking yeah. about him as being a coach, but no one, he'd never been a number one. But we looked at him, we looked at the criteria, and we thought, Do you know what, that quite fits what we're looking yes. for. Yeah. You know, he came through the door, and like I said, he was fantastic. And even now, people say to me, I know he's had, he's had a couple of dodgy spells at Rangers and then um, Sunderland, but, mm. you know, if, if, if someone was to ask me today, I'd, I always said that he would be a top manager somewhere. Mm. Yeah. You know, he's failed in his last two quests, but I think he jumped too early from QPR. But when he goes in there and you do a deal with him at QPR, what, how can a manager leave so quickly then? Like, like, I'm not saying you can give him an unbelievable contract yeah. or huge compensation, because you probably mightn't be able to get him in the door, but when yeah. a manager comes in who's probably not got that many options, mm. that they can leave so quickly without decent compensation or whatever yeah. it might yeah. be, and a manager can just walk out the door. You know, what, one of the things I said was, you know, Michael came through the door and uh, I think there was a lot of clubs that had looked at Michael, right. but didn't take the chance because he hadn't been the number one. Right. Mm. He came through the door at QPR 
And then all of a sudden everyone's going, oh, right, this is, yeah. this is what we thought he could be. The real right. Deal. And then sort of like, you know, the Wolves were the first club to come. That's right, yeah. You know, and, and, and then even then, you know, I, 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 and, he, and he'll tell you this if you ever speak to him. Wolves came in the day we were playing, we were playing at home, I think it was playing Hull at home. They came in and um, spoke to the CEO, the CEO calls me and he says, can you believe they've called on a match day? Jesus. All right? And I said, all right, no problem. So after the game, I go down, I say to Michael, Michael, um, we, we need to say something here because this is going to be in the press tomorrow. So you either need to say something to players. And he goes, listen, I didn't know it was happening today. So Mike, if you want me and you just carry on being friends, don't lie to me. Right. Because so, I've not lied to you the whole time you've been at this football club. He said, well, look, I knew they was coming in, but I didn't know it was, it was, right. it was, it was today. No problem. So I said, what do you want to do? And um, I said, I'm the director of football at QPR and I don't want you to leave. Right. right? I, that, I don't want you to leave this football club. Where we are at this moment and where we're going, no chance I want you to leave this football club. So he goes, OK, but I had, I had my uh, QPR uh, blazer on and, yeah. and threw it. So I took it off and threw it to the side. I said, now I'm Les Ferdinand talking to you. You've got to do whatever the best thing is for you and your family. Oh. Right? And he said to me, now that Shut you've up. done that, yeah. he said, now that you've done that, you've taken the badge out at play and you talk to me like a human being. He said, I can't leave this football club. Oh. He said, can, you know, obviously he was being offered Premier League, <laughs> yeah. Premier League wages. He said, can we change the structure at, at all? So I went to the owners and said, look, this is the case. And they were willing to change the structure mm -hmm. for him. And then Rangers came in. And to be honest, to be honest Very with you, surprising to be one. honest with you, when he came to the football club and we've all done it, we've all done it. We've, we've been at fo football clubs that we've enjoyed. When people talk to me about Newcastle, it was the best, best period of my life in, in football. Mm. And so I have fond, fond memories of, 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 of Newcastle. Michael Beale had fond memories of, of Rangers. Whenever he spoke about any of the clubs he's been at, yeah. Rangers was the one that he spoke about with the mm. most fondness. Yes. And I always said to the owners, if we're going to lose Michael Beale, I don't think it'd be now, but in a year or two's time, I think it might be to Rangers. Yeah. I think that's the only club that yeah. will think, unbeknown, they, they, they were going to come in as soon yeah. as they came in, and they did. And I think that, you know, the appeal of what, what had happened and him thinking, this may never come around again, yeah. But how can he just leave then? How can a manager? I don't mean. But I, I, it's like a player. So they obviously just agree compensation with the club. Yeah. Simple yeah. as that. Oh, okay. And, and, and you know what it's like. Someone comes to you and says, "I want to. You know, right. I'm interested in this. Mm. You know, they're no longer interested at QBR. Yeah. And they're, they're heading their hearts somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Well, Sunderland was even less time, wasn't it? Because yeah. I thought he was going to come and make a massive impact, especially on the back of that. And it was only. How many games yeah. was he in charge? Like, yeah. Why has he struggled less? I mean, what's your feeling of why he struggled? I, I, Michael's a very confident, confident person um, in the way he comes across and in the media and on, on and, and uh, you know, on, on social media and everything. He's very, very confident in what he, he did. And when he came to QBR, um, that confidence the, the, the boys got on board with. And I think taking it somewhere else. Yeah. This this was his first his, his first foray into it, and so I think the boys got. But he's confident, so he's having himself a little bit. Yeah, he's, he, he's very confident okay. in what he does, and you know, in the way he spoke to the players, and the manner in yeah, which he okay. spoke to the players. Yeah. They, you know, they bought into it. It was yeah. his first gig, and and and, he, and you know, he'd done his homework, and he he was excellent. Absolutely excellent, and, and I've got to be honest, it's the first manager that's come through the door that's done exactly what we wanted him to right. do yeah. in terms of you know getting the best out of the players. And we, we had players that we thought we're going to sell this one, we're going to sell that one, that one's going to go, and blah blah blah. And like I said, it just uh, how many just months ended. was he there? How many months that QPR? So he <laughs> came in in the, in the summer and he was gone by November, that was Jesus. just before the, uh, the World Cup, so, mm. yeah. I was just thinking before about when Les was discarding those CVs in the bin that he wasn't even looking at them. It could be mine and yours. Wouldn't it? <laughs> 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 it wouldn't be even, you wouldn't even, you're not anti Irish, are you? <laughs> you wouldn't even no, know the shredder. It was us. <laughs> the shredder. We, I applied once. We didn't yeah. <laughs> even know he was kicked just at once. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we never discarded the CVs. We looked at them. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, no, no. <laughs> 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 Nice little gig, that one. <laughs> Miami and Miami. Miami. Let's what, does, what does a successful sporting director do? Because I, I mean, I was only a manager for four months. I had a sporting director there for a couple of months. And I, I, I was imagining his role was quite difficult in terms of interfering, but not looking like they're interfering. Managing, but not looking like they're managing. Giving advice where they're not, but not giving advice. Because, you, you know, I think you should play this way or... I think yeah. you should play him, or I think you should. Where's the line for a sporting director? Is there a line? <laughs> no, is there a line? No, I'm just saying. I'm so, saying. Yeah, where's that? So, where's that balance? So me personally, I, I I can't bring you in as a manager and then tell you how to play. No, I might as well do your job. Yeah, I might as well apply for your job. And but if he's get, to do but if a manager's getting the team wrong and you can see it and the system's wrong, how do you deliver so, that message? So mm. I think on on occasions. Uh, Every, every game, I, I would sit and I'd speak with the manager. The manager would tell me the team that on, on a Friday, blah, blah, blah. And um, we, we would talk about it. I'd never say to him, I think you should play this one or I think you should play that one. All we do is, he says to me, Les, we need a right back. And I go, OK. He says, I want Gary Neville. And I go, we can't afford Gary Neville. Mm. But what we could do with all the, with all the data... <laughs> no, I care. Are you just teaming up, Les? Are you just teaming up to... Come on, mate. He's trying to look at his back. Nice one, mate. Don't, don't, don't bite. That's, that's better than that. That's better than that. But, but, but I'm saying, right, we, ain't got, we can't afford <laughs> Gary Neville. Mm. But with, with uh, the head of recruitment and, uh, and all the sports science and all the data, we come up with three or four similar types to, to a Gary Neville. And I say to him, well, this is what we can afford. Take your pick. Mm. Yeah. I never. I, there's no player that come, came into QBR apart from the younger players that weren't going to affect the first team straight away yeah. mm. that, the man, that the manager didn't say yes to. Mm. Yeah. There were a couple that he wanted and we said no to, mm. but there was never a player that came through the door that was thrust upon the manager and said, you've got to play him. Right. That happens Premier League sometimes, though, doesn't it, or not? Or do you think I think manager... that's how... It's different at each club, but I think that's yeah. one of the popular ways yeah. of doing it. Yeah. But... I, yeah. think, I think the manager's at, always got to have a say in it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. again, the, the boundaries you have. But I always think whoever's director of football, or even if you're a manager, you've got staff around you, I always say your, your aim is to help the manager. Exactly. 100%. Help the manager 100%. But what is that, Roy? What does that mean? So, so, so we, you, you sit down... Well, sometimes, again, that's where the boundaries are. That's where a bit of common sense comes in. staying away from them? For example, or? you're watching a team playing the weekends. It must be hard when you're an ex-player as well. Yeah. yeah, and I see you at Salford matches. And sometimes people think they know what's better. But if you've... If you've interviewed managers, you have to give the manager that chance. It doesn't mean yeah. say you can't have a sit down chat going, oh, he's struggling. He goes, yeah, yeah, you, and you, that, you and do yeah. it, but you have yeah. to have. I, I had a little bit with it when I was up Sunday for a while, not, like Niall was the chairman. Yeah. And I, I'll give Niall plenty of credit. But when he was the chairman, and Niall's an ex player, and he, looked, but he never once would he get involved, ever. And I know him, he must yeah. have been tempted sometimes, yeah. but he was always there to help as well. So if I wanted a player, he'd give a little bit of feedback, yeah, but. It's too much wages, too extra. And I always felt, yeah, I felt he was there to help me. Yeah, yeah. At no point did I think he's a hindrance or I know he's talking behind my back yeah. or he's taking, again, the usual one, I wouldn't yeah. have played him. Mm. And yeah. Everyone wants to be manager of a football club. Yeah. But I think it's just having them boundaries with people and being grown up as well and sitting down with somebody going, listen, you've played two and a half, they're struggling. You go, yeah, a bit of feedback. Yeah. But why are you the manager of the club? You have your own staff yeah. to deal with that. That's what you're in the job for. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how you found this, Les, but I found when, when I was sort of um, at Salford, I wasn't a sporting director, but I would have liaison with managers. Do you find managers, I mean, the, 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 the toughness of the, of the role, do you, do you find that they get insecure quite quickly? Yeah, for sure. They're so in, I, I used to find that, it used to, it used to worry me, I think, the insecurity of a manager, that they're questioning themselves, they're sort of asking you for sort of, if you like, validation of their team talk, and they're actually, to be fair, they're not as sure as they actually sometimes propel. Did you find that? Yeah, because I, I think sometimes, you know what it's like sitting in the changing rooms, you're not, you, you've got 11 players or you've got 16, 17 yeah. players sitting there. You're not, you're not going to strike a chord with every single one of them. Yeah. And you know what it's like, you could sometimes be talking and someone's not looking at you while you're talking and thinking, he ain't taking in what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when they're looking for the validation. They're looking, do you think that was okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you go, yeah. yeah. And like I said, I never, I never used to go into the change rooms for, for the team. Yeah. Every now and again, after, after a game, I'd go and listen to what he's got to say. Yeah. But I'd never, ever, ever butt into anything that he had to say. No. Um, we would go into his office after and we'd talk. And we, like you'd talk about football at the yeah. end of the yeah. game, he mm. played well or he didn't play well. Mm. That's what we used to do. Yeah. But I would never yeah. say to him, do you know what? You can't play him next week. Yeah. Yeah. There, was only one, there was only one occasion I remember having a, a bit of a row with a manager. We'd, we'd taken a kid on loan um, and we'd, we were paying quite a lot of money. And he'd had a, a couple of horror games. Mm. And, I, and I said to the manager, the only thing I'll say to you is like, 
all my scouts and all that said about this player, mm. he wasn't right. I came to you and said he weren't right for us. But in the end, you, you persuade us to take him. All I'd like is one of our players, one of our own players, to play as badly as that. Because if he did, you'd be saying to me, I don't want him nowhere near my mm. first team. Mm. But because we're paying a bit of money, and this is, and this is what I'm talking about, yeah. development and giving people the, an opportunity. You'll take someone from a Tottenham or a, uh, an Arsenal or someone, take them on loan and allow them to play badly in 10 games, mm. but your very own, you give one game to him. And if he plays like that, you go, right, I'm out the door. That was the only, that was the only time I had an argument with manager. Other There's than also that, issues with loan players, I know, separate where people, clubs are under pressure. To, when they put him on loan to a QPR or a championship, he they has have to, to play. play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't, there's a financial point. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's, yeah, there's loads of different things. People don't, don't see yeah. that, though, yeah. do they? Sometimes. Yeah. It's easy to understand it. Wow. I just want to take you back to 95, 96. Oh, thank you. Final part. <laughs> you knew you weren't getting away without this. That. It's Christmas. Yes. You're 12 points clear of Manchester United. Jesus. Yes. What happened? Um, I spoke about this the other day, and, and uh, someone said to me, did, did, did you lot bottle it? And I said, well, <laughs> I said, well, that's what a load of people would say. Yeah. We bottled it. Yeah. Uh, and then they said, so do you think Arsenal bottled it last yeah. year? And I said, no, no, no. I said, because I've been in that, in that position, I understand what happens. Up until Christmas, we were playing free-flowing football. No one was thinking about everything. We just going out and we were playing. We were scoring goals. We were winning games. Mm -hmm. we, got to, we got to Christmas. I always remember going back to, to London and coming back straight to the training ground. We had a training, we had a training session. Go to the training ground and there's a fellow with a shirt on walking in front of me, because at, uh, at uh, Newcastle, we used to play, train at a place called Maiden Castle, which was a university. And I was telling someone the story the other day, the first, the first time, <coughs> the first day we got pre-season, I go into the, the showers after the game, I've gone, I'm showering away, and I've gone, fuck me, that was hard today. There's no response to, from the fellas that's two showers away. I went, don't you think that was hard today? I look across, it's just a geezer from the university. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, Where's he come from? Like, I mean, but... So, yeah, I'll get back to the training group, sorry, back to the story. And this geezer's got uh, Champions 96 on his shirt. Oh, no. Oh. Do you know what I mean? You know those little... In January. Yeah, yeah, this is this is December. December. This is December. We'll get um, excited in the North East. Exactly, and he's got Champions 96 and I thought, you don't need to see yeah, it. You can't yeah. see Didn't that. really want to see that. And then I think what happened, what we started to, after Christmas, we started to think about it. And then we knew that you guys were coming and, and it was like... What geez. are the team meetings like with Keegan? What was he like? Was he, because obviously everybody remembers the love and stuff, but what was he like in, in when he's talking? Because you could feel, could you feel the anxiety? Could you feel it? No, at the time, no. No, I have to. I have to be honest. He was. He was pretty calm. He was right. pretty cool. I mean, I know everyone looks. Well, he's at obviously the, holding it in. The, the Leeds game yeah. and stuff. And, and and no, he was. He was pretty calm. You know, a Terry yeah. McDermott around. These guys mm -hmm. have won things in their yeah, career. Yeah. There wasn't a lot in 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 that in that uh, Newcastle side that had won things in in the yeah. past. And so it was a little bit of. We started to get caught and we started to think about everything we were mm -hmm. doing. And you know what it's like. And it, I, I, no matter what sport you play. You start to think about it. everything happens a, little, a second, a, a second yeah. slower, and then suddenly you, the, the shot that you would take is getting blocked. Mm. The, the tackle that you'd make, and you're thinking about it, the pe person goes round you, and before you knew it, we went went to Arsenal, mm. lost to uh, lost to Arsenal, went to Liverpool, lost at Liverpool in that four three game. I feel if we'd have won the the, the Liverpool game that four yeah. three, that would have given us a boost to go carry. Momentum's on. huge. Yeah, I, exactly. I keep using that word. Yeah. That momentum towards the end of the season. Yeah. Even a couple of defeats there, I always look back at certain teams, you've got even a draw. Yeah. But you're thinking, yeah, someone's hunting the stone, you have to win. No, no, yeah. it's, it's a yeah. few draws along yeah. the way. The time, obviously, we've ended up in one there. Yeah, yeah. Even a draw there. Yeah, exactly. It's just a gap yeah. and momentum, and we ended up getting what, what, the second what, half. What did you make of it when Kevin did the famous sort of, I love it if we beat them? What as players? I mean, I think, I think you know what you know what training ground is like. We went yes. in next, next day and everyone was going, I'd love it. Everything no, he did was, no. I'd love it, I'd love it. <laughs> no. And, and no one saw it as... Kevin was one of those, you know, I always say players, fans want players to wear their heart on their sleeves. Oh, he was that guy. He's emotional, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, exactly. and, and Kevin wore his heart on his sleeve. And as a manager, that's seen as a weakness. Absolutely not. No, I don't think so. But but I think most people saw it as yeah. Alex yeah. Ferguson winning the mind games yeah. over Kevin Keegan. He just wore his heart on his sleeve. And yeah. I don't think there was any player at the time that thought, 
He's lost he's it. Soft, but he would have yeah. loved it. He's just yeah. saying why yeah. yeah. he would have loved you know, it. I'd but how won. are you feeling on the flip side? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you're chasing that, were you confident you, that you could yeah. do it? Did you ever talk about when it? When you saw that interview, did you think, think yeah, we've that got that experience, him. that belief? No, not from the interview, far from, but just from the couple of results. And you see them obviously slipping up in certain games and the win. But no, this... Uh, I'd never be critical of Kevin Keegan for that. Mm. I, I'd, I admire him, not just for that bit, because he is an emotional guy. He's not a robot. So th this idea that they lost it because of some... Yeah. They probably slipped up just before that. Yeah, the, the kind of damage was yeah. done. And I go back to it, momentum, and we, we'd always feel we could hunt a team down. When I saw it, the first thing you instantly think is he's in his head now. Ferguson's got him now. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. Most, yeah. most, yeah. most yeah. people thought that way. Yeah. Yeah. You just think Perception that. You just think, oh, OK. Because obviously he's trying to remember as time went by, he's trying to do it with with Wenger. It just yeah. didn't. It wasn't. Just didn't hit the same. But obviously he worked on the fact that Kevin Keegan's emotional. That's what he went with, mm. yeah. and just, so he tried to accuse him of something that would go yeah. yeah. integrity. To, to <laughs> yeah, he was hurt by it that. Was like, yeah, yeah. 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 It was like you know what? Yeah. It was a mean. Yeah. It was a mean yeah. <laughs> thing to do. Well, he said because we played we played against Leeds and he, he, he thought they were going to roll over because because yes. of their rival we we were yes, uh, yeah, uh, United uh, United <laughs> and then we was we'd agree to play in. Uh, uh, Stuart Pearce's yes. testimonial yeah. at the end of the season. Forest we, we had Forest yeah. to play. And he went, well, they're going to roll over, aren't they? It was clever. Yeah. It was clever, yeah. but, you know. Yeah. Well, the perfect place to end. That was absolutely fascinating. Les, that was uh, you, so man. insightful, bro. Thank you. Oh, Thank you for having me on. I can't even Thank imagine what it's like being in there. Amazing. Well done. Great to see you. Cheers, man. Brilliant. Bye, guys. You still want another player who was two days late, but do that. Who's, 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 who's two days late? Yeah. Come on, Les. No, we can't. We're still oh, on the record. We're on the record. Still, yeah. still, Les, watch out. It, it, it was publicised at the time. No, no. No, it right. wasn't. OK. Les, do you remember scoring a goal at the back post against me where you put me in the back of the net? Yes, well, that was... Why didn't you mention that, that on the I just, I just remember that... QPR, a chip to the that back was your, post. That was your first game, wasn't it? My first, one of my first games, and literally he subbed me about two minutes later and put... I think you might put you right back. Right back. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered you literally battered me into the back post. Yeah, would that be something... Would that well, be... You've done that loads of times. Oh, no! <laughs> you you meant not... this? You just spoke about a couple of words. You meant this? Remember you ended up in the goal in the back of the post? How did that... No, I'm saying to he literally jumped above me and just went boom. Yeah, because and just smashed that's what the manager would have said to me before the game. You get round the back of him. Bully him. Please tell me. Do you know that game I was playing as Trevor Sinclair? Wow. That right. game did all right, but yeah. then it, honestly, Les came to the back post and. Oh. Yeah, is that something that would have bothered you oh. as well, girl? Because you'd like got. Of course, he's going to peel off in the back of you. I'd be doing that every day of the week. <laughs> get, get back off the level. Get level. Nick, honestly, what I used to do. You used to love that one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Les, like, no, I used to be good at the back post jumping into people, but yes. he, I just got square on, which is just absolute no, disaster. But the thing is, and Les just got up. The sad thing is, he can't even remember. He's like, of course I don't. Have we got that video? Kevin, Kevin no. Gallon crossed it. Kevin Gallon. Yes. Les was one, yeah, but Les had the, the hang time. He used to have a trampet uh, in his back pocket. He just put it down and just like, Les was up here. Nev was waiting for him. Good. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't <laughs> very good in the end. I've never seen anyone jump that high. Les was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. But I think it's wanting it. What's that? It's like wanting it. Bravery, isn't it? Ooh. No, but if you've got Gary. You know what's good about it, though, Jill, is that if you've got Gary on the back pocket, you can just peel off. You ain't scoring against me on the back post. You never scored against Man United. You never scored against Man United. I wasn't that player. I wasn't that player. I wasn't the number nine to come in and bat you. Because if I was, girl, you probably wouldn't. We wouldn't probably on the show together. I would have absolutely smashed him. I'm Les. smashing him, Les. Les. Are we doing a picture? Where's the guy? Where's the picture? Why are we all of a sudden using a smaller camera? What's that? You've got thing? a very important Come engagement guy, to get to. No, right, no. we have a business meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Another podcast. You can't, <laughs> can't, Les, can't, you can't, offer for us, right? You can't take a picture on voice, Ford. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. No.